Hi everyone, this video is from a free webinar we did on Flipgrid, which is a tool that I like to use in teaching mathematics both online and in the classroom. This, is, this particular video is the last 10 minutes of the webinar where I go through some of my favorite tools to use with mathematics and Flipgrid. Um, so if you have any questions, go ahead and give us a shout. If you like the video, we'd sure appreciate it if you'd subscribe down below. And if you click on the bell and select notifications whenever we upload a video like this one, you'll get an email from YouTube about it. So please like and subscribe, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Okay, so now a couple of ideas for Flipgrid with math. As you know, um, my wife and I are co-authors of a Singapore math series. So we're big into the problem solving approach, student interaction, student collaboration, and students being able or needing to be able to explain their thinking and develop arguments. So it's huge to us. And that's what, when we started using Flipgrid, um, that was the answer to the question for remote instruction basically, which is how do I get my kids to be able to interact, to be able to talk and explain their thoughts and their thinking to their teacher when they're 50 miles away. So this is an anchor task from one of our textbooks. And you by all means can post an anchor task as a Flipgrid assignment and have the kids talk for two minutes about the anchor task. Give them specific instructions. What I suggest is kids work on this anchor task. Do as much of it you can with yourselves. If you need a little help from your mom and dad, go ahead and ask, try not to. Um, and go ahead and explain to me why you think three quarters is bigger than three fifths. And if you can, show me two or three different ways that you could show me that it is bigger than three, that three fourths is bigger than three fifths. Um, things like that. So you can do your anchor tasks on Flipgrid. Love it for that. Now, once you've done the anchor task on Flipgrid, what you can do is you can actually create a mixtape, which you'll see a little bit button up there. Every single student response has a button that says add to a mixtape. And you can have that as the anchor task, for the chapter and lesson number. This way you can provide a select number of uh, responses to that anchor task from students that you can share with the entire class. And then in turn, they can share their thoughts back, um, all with prompts and questioning. So you can share out specific answers to anchor tasks. You can ask students to comment on what you've shared out and then share that with the class again. So you can keep on sharing responses and structuring the discussion just like you would in a classroom. Um, and it's pretty smooth. I haven't had, I mean, it doesn't take that much longer. It's real. once you get good at Flipgrid, it's really a good, good interface. It's not too laborious. There's not too much tedium. Now, um, we also do a lot of journal writing. Um, so another thing that you could do would be to have kids talk out their journal prompt. Also, they can snap a picture of it and use that as their selfie. So, hey, kids, I want you to work on the journal prompt on page 81. Do the best you can. Snap a picture of it and then create a video for me explaining to me your thoughts on it. It's a great little assignment there, you know. Um, For longer problems, the weekly math problem, you can give this to the entire class. And what I've seen people do and what I've done for a weekly problem is I've moderated it. I've let kids post their solutions, then released the solutions on Thursday, have kids look at them Thursday night, and then we talk about them on Friday. Um, or you can talk about them on a Google Classroom chat. You can talk about them on Flipgrid. You can talk about them on a Google Meet and share the solutions, whether they be video. I mean, there's so many different options, but a weekly math problem is another great thing that you can do with the kids. Now, one of my favorites is error analysis. So I'll use something called Dopey Donalds. It's my standard name. I said, Dopey Donalds making mistakes again. And his teacher asked him to write equations of these two graphs, and those are the equations. They're both wrong. Explain to me what's wrong with each one and what he should have done to write the equation correctly. So an error analysis is wonderful. Kids love them. I mean, it's a great, great thinking tool.
another one um, that the little kids like to do, I haven't done this high school too, too much. I think I did it once in middle school. It's a uh, stump the teacher where um, you actually have the kids research or create a problem that they can explain and solve and that they think you will have a difficult time solving or explaining and they post that problem. It can be around a particular unit, a particular theme, or it can be from anywhere in general, depending on what you want to have them, or what you want to have them do. So you can set the guidelines. It's got to be maths. <laughs> it's got to be fractions, something like that. Um, so stump the teacher is great. Now, would you rather math.com is a great resource for Flipgrids. Now, the next couple of resources I'm going to give you are basically ready-made, canned, you just look by topic, you can copy the picture, post it right in Flipgrid, quick sentence or two instructions and have and uh, tell the kids to just have at it. And it work, they work really, really well. Would you rather math.com is great for that. And they have from second grade all the way to high school um, problems. Actually, Algebra 1. Um, they didn't go much above Algebra 1 that I could see. But the nice thing is, is when you're surfing through would you rather math.com, you can actually come up with ideas for other subjects as well. So if you are a geometry and algebra two teacher, you'll come up with ideas from algebra one and from eighth grade math too. So um, it's a great resource. Would you rather math.com? Yeah, Katie, I am going to send you out the slides. Um, this is one of the best websites around for Flipgrid. It's called Which One Doesn't Belong? Um, if we have the time, I'll show you one that I did that was a, a bunch of trigonometry graphs that I created. I also have that I'll share in the resources. I don't know if anybody uses Canva, it creates images. I created a Canva template to create which ones don't belong um, with some teacher instructions that I'm working on as well. So basically you wanna make sure that each one has one thing unique to the other three. So for example, what, why would you say that 121 doesn't belong with the other three? Three digits. Um, why would you say 73 doesn't belong? It's not a perfect square. It's a prime number, the others aren't prime. So you get the idea that they really get kids thinking. And if you go to that website, wodd.ca, there are tons of them for K to six or seven, eight, maybe. Um, there's a couple of calculus ones on there that I saw. Um, it's a little thin at the high school level. That's why I create my own. Um, but um, if you search Google, which one doesn't belong trigonometry, you will find some on the internet. But as far as this particular resource is concerned, doesn't go much beyond eighth, ninth grade with some patchy things in algebra two and, and calc but um for k8 k7 perfect and there's a ton of them here's one that they had that was a high school level one which one doesn't belong cube uh divisible by five you know you can go on and on with them so these are great I love the convince me that's now that's actually a name of a type of problem in mathematics if you didn't know that already so if you put in quotations in Google, convince me that, and then a space and then put in a topic, fractions, you will probably find a lot of great convince me that problems uh, to share out with your kids. Um, so use those keywords, convince me that, but make sure you put them in quotes. So this way Google only looks for those. And a convince me that pro uh, uh, problem is terrific. This one, I don't know if there's any secondary math teachers out there, but as a tip, I would tell them to use the unit circle maybe to show me that the sine square plus the cosine, cosine square is always equal to one, and then hopefully they'll get to the Pythagorean theorem at some point, right? So um, there are tons of convince me that problems out there, and they're great for flip grids. Okay, so questions. Those are all the quick resources that I was going to share with you today. Um, does anybody need? anything from me right now. I'd be happy to answer any questions. <laughs>